Hello everyone, George here, and picking up after our last video where we completed our bouncing balls using vectors and proper reflection off walls. In this video, we're going to create a new kind of object using some of the things we developed with our bouncing ball. We're going to make a very simple particle system or a particle explosion where from a central source we have a bunch of spheres or circles exploding outwards. This is going to use all the techniques we've already implemented and a few new ones. So let's go ahead and start by creating our new class. So go to Java, right click, new, Java class. We're going to call this particle explosion. The super class is going to be our canvas object class and hit OK. Here we are. We need to implement the methods that are necessary. Alt insert, implement methods, and on draw. This is going to be a simplified particle explosion for the moment because technically we're still drawing on the main thread with our custom view. We should really be separating our update loop from our draw loop and we'll be getting to that uh, eventually. But for right now, I'm just trying to keep things simple and showing you new ways to use the canvas to draw things to the screen. So a particle explosion is actually going to contain a nested class within it called a particle. Our nested class is going to feature such variables as the current life, the overall lifetime that it should exist for, its position, its velocity, and its color, as well as whether or not the particle is active at the moment. So let's create a protected class particle. No one else needs to access it except for the particle explosion. So let's create our float current life, float lifetime, vector 2D position, and a vector 2D velocity. Now let's store our color information, int alpha. I'm going to keep these separated right now into their separate fields rather than combining them into a single hexadecimal integer value just for our convenience when we want to change these values in the future. And then we're going to add a boolean active equals true. Now we need our constructor and that's just going to be a simple one. We are going to uh, populate all these different fields. So public particle, the parameters are going to be our x direction, our y. We could be using vectors for this. However, um, we're going to be getting this information most likely as an x and a y coordinate. So I'm just going to be working with x and y's. Uh, vector 2D starting velocity, which is going to slowly decay over time. Int r, int g, int b. So now position is equal to a new vector 2D. And that's going to take in the x and the y coordinates. Next up, we have our lifetime is going to be equal to the max lifetime. Then we have our current life, which is going to be set to our lifetime because it's the start of things and that's how long we have to live. Our velocity is going to be equal to our starting velocity. And now our red component is R, our green component is G, and our blue component is B. And alpha, which is stored as a value between 0 and 255, starts at 255. Now that we have our nested class done, and all the particle class does is we're going to instantiate these, and that's going to hold all the information for the state of that particular particle. We want all the particles to have different states so that they move in their own individual ways. Our particle explosion is going to need a couple variables. We're going to do protected float time passed. This is how long time has passed while this particle uh, system has been alive, basically. We're also going to need a protected vector 2D point, a protected part array of particles, so particle particles, protected int number of particles. This is the maximum number of particles or how many that we actually want to create. And then finally, we're going to need a paint object, paint, paint, for w with which to paint all these particles. Now let's go ahead and create our constructor. Just one public particle explosion. That's going to take in a float x, float y, float y, and the number of particles that we want to spawn. So int num particles. So let's uh, create our paint object. Paint is equal to new paint object. Our point is going to be equal to a new vector 2D, and that's just going to be the X and Y coordinate. 
We want to do a check to make sure we're going to actually create some particles. So if the num particles is less than one, let's make sure number of particles is equal to one. This dot number of particles is equal to num particles. You can omit the this if you want to. Particles is going to be equal to a new particle array, and that's going to be of size number of particles. So we're going to have our initial maximum velocity, which for right now we're just going to hard code. This, this could be another parameter that you pass in, but for right now we're just going to hard code it. And we're also going to need some randomization for a lot of these. So let's create a new random, random, new random, and Alt Enter to bring that in to our class. Now we're going to need to loop through each of these and set them up. So this is going to be a giant for loop. For and i is equal to zero, i is less than the number of particles, i plus plus. So first let's do our color. So let's create a color array called RGB, and it's going to store inside of it the values for R, G, and B. And right now I'm pushing them towards the red spectrum. And what we're going to do now is we're going to randomly, every time we do this loop, subtract some amount. From, and you can play with this all you want. So the first term is 0. The second term is a 1 and green, or R, G, and B. So red, green, blue. We're going to do this three times, one for each. And we're just going to skew them a little bit so that each one of these particles ends up having a slightly different color. Excuse me. Plus equals random dot next int. And we're going to... It's arbitrary, put whatever, whatever numbers you want to, but I'm going to get a value between um, 0 and 50. And I'm then going to, excuse me, I'm going to get a value between 0 and 49, and I'm going to subtract out of this 25. And that way I get a value between negative 25 and the positive 25 range for where we're moving things. So you got to subtract half of this if you want to make sure the range can go positive and negative. I'm going to do the same thing for 1 and 2, but I'm going to slightly change things. I don't want. Uh, that much blue going on. So we'll do 20. And then green, we're going to do a lot of that so that we can get some nice colors. And I'll do half of that as well so I get a nice range. Okay, so let's set up our starting velocity now. So start velocity is going to be equal to a new vector 2D. And once again, we're going to use randoms to help us out here. What's our first parameter and our second parameter? Let's grab random dot next float. Now this is a value between 0 and 1, and I'm going to subtract that from 0.5f, so it's between negative 5 and positive, negative 0.5 and positive 0.5. And I'm going to do the same thing for this portion as well. Too many, bra uh, too many parentheses, there we go. But I want to make sure that this is normalized. Dot normalize. Now we're actually going to use that velocity vector and change its size. Since it's a unit vector and it's only direction at the moment, we now need to multiply it or do scalar multiplication on it. So now let's do start velocity dot scalar. And we're going to multiply this by another random dot next float. And we're going to multiply that by our initial max velocity. So we're getting some value between 0 and 1 and we're multiplying that by our max value, so the velocity of one of these particles is going to be in that, in that, somewhere in that range. So now we just need to create our particle. So particles i is going to be equal to a new particle. And that's going to contain the x and the y location. That's going to have a maximum lifetime, which I'm going to say is 2 seconds, just something I decided to use. And then we're going to put our start velocity in there. And now our color values, which is just RGB0, RGB1 and RGB2. Great. So that seeds everything. Now we just need to uh, iterate over every particle, continually update its position, and uh, well, yeah, that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and just set up the drawing before we set up the uh, movement or the update. So inside of here, very easy, another for loop. For int i is equal to zero, i is less than particles dot length i plus plus now let's set up our paint since each of the uh, particles has its own distinct color we're going to have to change our paint object for each one so dot set color 
and that's just going to be color.argb. So we're taking in those three values, and we're going to pull out our particles i dot red, excuse me, dot alpha, and next up is our particles i dot r for red, and then particles i dot blue, and of course I missed green, so let's go back and fill that one in, particles dot green and I'll enter to bring color in. That sets up our paint object. Now all we need to do is do a canvas dot draw circle. We will take the particles, let's do particles i dot position dot x, particles i dot position dot y, and then we need to know the radius of the object. And I'm going to base that radius off the amount of time that has passed. We could store this within the particle and make it a random size as well. That's up to you. I'm just going to keep them all the same size. And what I'm going to do is say that its size is going to be the amount of time that's passed times three. That times three is just a value I thought appropriate. And then we pass it our paint object. So now we get into the update part of this whole thing, which is far more interesting. So now let's create a public void on update. And actually this is going to be protected. For the moment we're going to be calling this with an on draw for this particular particle. Uh, in the future we'll be moving this off into a separate thread as I keep saying. But for now we're going to be calling on update first our on draw method. We'll move this to a public version that gets called by a thread later on. So first let's update time passed is going to equal to plus our custom view dot delta time. Now we're going to iterate over each of our particles and update them. So once again a for loop int i is equal to zero, i is less than particles dot length, i plus plus. Now I want to first check to see if the particle is active. If it's not active I'm not going to update it. So first particles i dot active. Now let's create a vector 2d temp is going to be equal to vector 2d dot scalar. This is going to create for us a new vector and it's going to be the particles i dot velocity and we're going to be uh, we're adding a frictional element so they slow down. And we're going to multiply that by a negative 0 0.f times the custom view dot delta time. Now we need to, of course, add that to our existing vector. So we're now going to do a particles i dot, dot velocity dot add, and we're going to add to it temp. Now we need to set up the new position for the particle. So let's do particles i dot position is going to be equal to dot add vector 2d dot scalar. So we're going to multiply our velocity vector times our delta time and that's going to tell us how much we've moved. And that's going to be particles i dot velocity. Now it's been updated and our custom view dot delta time. Next up we need to reduce the amount of life our particle has. So particles i dot current life minus equals custom view dot delta time and I'm also going to reduce our alpha that is it's going to become more and more transparent as time continues so that's going to be alpha is equal to we need to cast this to an integer but basically we're going to take our particles i dot current life we're going to use the current life divide that by its overall length of lifetime which gives us a value between 1 and 0, 0 and 1 and then we're going to multiply this by 255 which gives us a value between 0 and 255 which is what this is expecting and if the particles i dot current life 
is less than or equal to zero, well, we're going to turn it inactive so that we don't have to deal with it anymore. So particles i dot active is equal to false, and then particles i dot alpha is equal to zero. Great. So there is one problem, and we're not going to talk about this in this video because it's going on for far long enough, but how do we destroy our particle explosions? Uh, especially if we want to maybe destroy them from some other game object. And what we'd end up needing to do is creating some sort of a destruction mechanism, uh, creating some functionality that makes it easy for us to call maybe destroy a particular object. We'll be getting to that later on in these more game-like examples. But for right now, this is fine. Just realize that you're probably going to end up having these particle explosions sticking around. So I would recommend for the moment is creating a set number of particle explosions at a place. Okay, so with that, we should have all the functionality we need to create a particle explosion. So let's go to... All right, so let's make this work within our custom view. All we're going to do is every time the user picks up their finger, we're going to have the particle cloud uh, get spawned. So down here, inside of action up, we're going to want to create that object. So let's do particle explosion. Particle explosion is equal to a new particle explosion. And then fill in those values. So we're going to take the motion event dot get x and the motion event dot get y. And finally, the number of particles. Let's say that's just 20. And then once we've created that object, we're going to want to add it. So let's do our canvas objects dot add and particle explosion. So there's a problem with this, and I hope you see it right now. We're going to be adding these objects to our uh, particle explosion, but even though they're but they're going to expire, they're going to die, but we're still going to be iterating over them and running all that expensive code. Later on, we're going to talk about ways of issuing or warning our loop here that this object should be destroyed. That is flagging it for destruction and then removing it from our list and repopulating things. But that's another video. So let's go ahead and hit run now. Hit OK on our device and let's boom. And there we can see, oh, well, I messed up, sort of. I Maybe I didn't mess up. That's fine, I guess, for the particles to shoot out from that end. We probably want more, but you can see we've added these particles and they're exploding mm -hmm. outwards. And now they're, I'm going to stop this before we get a bunch of boops. But anyway, that's it for adding a simple particle explosion to things. Remember, some problems that we still have with our current system is the fact that we're not removing these objects from our list, so we should have some sort of internal garbage collection flagging that these objects should be destroyed. And of course, I much rather would have had the bouncing balls uh, when they strike a surface create these particle explosions. I don't really have a way of creating canvas objects yet from within here and uh, giving them to the custom view. I mean, I could grab a hold of reference to, to do that, but really I'd probably like to make some sort of simpler functionality to make this whole thing work. And we'll be getting that in future videos. Thank you everyone for watching. Remember, if you enjoyed this video, consider liking it. And if you want to see more content like this in the future, go ahead and subscribe. Have a good day, everyone. So long. Goodbye.